Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's um, US Open Live webinar. It is Tuesday, July 11th, 10 minutes before Wall Street opens. I'm your host, Nikos Zabura, Senior Market Specialist at FXEM. Uh, it's a packed week, this one, with uh, significant uh, economic releases and more coming up over uh, the following days. Uh, so far, we've had China's inflation figures, which disappointed once again. Uh, and today, we got the UK jobs report, which showed, showed strong jobs growth once again, keeping pressure on the BOE for further tightening. Before, however, we talk about all of that, as always, please read carefully through the risk warnings and the disclaimers. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with GBP USD, where we had the jobs report out. It showed an uptick uh, in unemployment, but strong wage growth again will be a headache for the Bank of England. Uh, these figures don't help efforts to control high inflation. And create fears for wage, sustain actually fears for wage price uh, spiral. Uh, just yesterday, Governor Bailey warned that uh, price and wage increases are not consistent with the uh, 2% inflation targets. Policymakers were forced to accelerate the pace of tightening last month, and today's report definitely makes it hard for them to back down and reinforce the higher for longer scenario. So, GBP USD was lifted by. Uh, the strong wage growth as a result to new 2023 highs. And this brings 1.3167 uh, in the spotlight, but we likely need fresh impetus to challenge it. On the other hand, the RSI is close to oversold, uh, overbought, sorry, levels. And along with the fact that we expect UK uh, sorry, US CPI inflation figures tomorrow. This may contain the pair, as we already seen some containment after the um, reaction higher. And this could also create some pressure. However, a very strong catalyst would be required for a breach of the one of the, of the broader 1.265, uh, 1.26 confluence of supports. And as we said, uh, the next leg will likely be determined by US CPI inflation, which is due tomorrow and will, deter and will also be taken into account by Fed officials, which had paused in June, but had pointed to more hikes ahead and markets currently pricing and 25 basis points increase later this month. Now let's go to uh, Euro USD. The common currency remains at the driver's seat and after reacting positively to Friday's US jobs report uh, and comes closer to, to the 2023 highs at 1.1096. Despite the strong start to the week, it slides today and uh, there is scope for further pressure and a test of the 200 period EMA at around 1.0880, but the downside is well protected. We can see the daily Ichimoku cloud and further down the 200 days exponential moving average. Once again, Wednesday's US CPI uh, results could determine the trajectory of the pair and could uh, sort of create some lack of direction until then. Let's uh, switch gears and go to US oil. 
comes from two straight profitable weeks held by the cuts by Saudi Arabia and Russia, but started the new one with losses due to the poor Chinese data. Consumer price index in the world's uh, second biggest importer of oil was non-existent and deflation deepened on the producer side, which sustains fears around the Chinese economy. It looks like uh, the recovery has stalled. Uh, and that, of course, creates scope for a slide towards the 200 period DMA at around 71.2, 71.3, although last month's lows at 66.78 look distant. On the other hand, the commodity uh, regains its foot, tries to regain its footing to today after yesterday losses, and bulls are definitely at the driver's seat. They have the ability to challenge 75.96, but don't inspire confidence for much more. We're still ahead uh, four minutes before the US open markets, but let's go ahead and uh, take uh, the NASDAQ, and then we have a lot to talk about the upcoming event. So the US tech heavy index uh, had been advancing, but this has stalled for a while now as markets contemplate uh, Fed tightening prospects, you know, Western trade disputes and other factors. There is still risk for a test of the 200 period DMA at around uh, 14,700, but strong catalyst would be required for um, further losses in a bridge of 14,447. Bulls are definitely still in control. Still, the AI rally drives it, and we expect uh, soon the um, big tech earnings, which will be a factor for uh, the trajectory of um, the index. In any case, bulls are in control. Uh, they still have the 16k mark in the crosshairs but fresh impetus or deeper pullback may be needed for that now let's go ahead and talk about what's uh next this week uh tomorrow the big event is us uh cpi inflation now in the previous report uh headline had decelerated significantly and core had eased but still showed some stickiness As we said, the Fed uh, has pointed to more hikes and markets expect um, one in uh, July. And the outcome will definitely uh, be taken into account by uh, Fed policymakers. Wonder, it's interesting to see if a good report will bring back the disinflation talk and in general how uh, and if policymakers will comment on the outcome just days ahead of the uh, communication blackout period. Now, on the same day, on Wednesday, before uh, US CPI, we have the Reserve Bank of New Zealand. The central bank raised rates by 0.25% in May, the last decision, uh, with the cumulative tithing now having reached 525 basis points. There was a surprise, though, uh, which came from the updated projections that pointed, that suggested that the current 5.5% cash rate is the terminal one. That means that if officials abide by that projections, they would need to pause in uh, Wednesday's minute meeting. Sorry. So it remains to be seen if they are ready to do that, and then of course if if they can stay there or they will be forced to hike again, as many other central banks have done. One of those central banks is the Bank of Canada, which is also due on Wednesday. It had hit the, hit the pause button back in March and kept rates on stage since. However, it's rest it restarted its tightening cycle in June following an inflation uptick that spooked um, policymakers uh, who judged that um, policy was not sufficiently restrictive. They did not 
provide forward guidance. So it remains to be seen whether uh, that move was sufficient or not. We also get the earnings season getting underway on uh, Thursday with uh, Delta and big banks on Friday. We'll talk about that more in our next session. And we also have Amazon's Prime Day kicking off today, the two-day sales event by um, e-commerce giant Amazon. That's pretty much it from us for today. Big events coming up. And we'll talk again on Thursday at our usual slot, 10 minutes before Wall Street opens.